Uh, next, I'll introduce Adira to come. Uh, probably doesn't need much of an introduction to most people in the room. Uh, Adira is our, uh, Dr. Levin is our executive director at BC Renal, uh, and she's going to come to give us the annual BC Renal update. So thank you very much for the for opening in such a good way, as Maureen says, first Audrey and then uh, Dr. O'Donnell. And it's really my privilege to be able to give you the annual BC Renal update, and especially for those people from other provinces and countries. I think we in BC have learned to live uh, as we have with BC Renal evolving, but many of you may not know all the things that we do. So this is an opportunity for everyone to hear and see. Um, so welcome. This is the first time that we've all been together in a room, as we've said, in a long time. And that energy is really amazing. Um, we, uh, the last time we were here was 2019, before anybody even heard of that little virus that uh, changed the world. So thank you all again for coming here. Um, Mike's already given the territorial acknowledgement, but uh, I too, as a not only an, a, um, a white settler in this country, but actually born in another country that has problems with Indigenous people, Australia, I'm also very um, mindful of elders past, present and emerging uh, in this country and around the world and really do everything can to support them by uh, acknowledging uh, the value and all the things that we have done wrong and how much I have learned over the last five years especially, um, that I wish I had known a long time ago. So for starters, we're gonna give you a little bit of an overview of BC Renal. So I will ask them to queue up the video to start because this will give you a bit of a context. Hello, I'm Dr. Adira Levin, Executive Director of BC Renal. And I'm coming to you from the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil Tooth. I'm very happy to be joining you to provide an overview of how the BC Renal Network serves one in 10 British Columbians who are living with kidney disease. We have over 20,000 registered kidney patients, including over 16,000 who are not on dialysis and over 3,500 patients who are on dialysis. Our network includes the five health authority kidney programs, plus BC Children's Hospital, and all of these deliver direct patient care, as many of you have either experienced or know about. We have over 80 kidney care clinics, home dialysis clinics, and dialysis units, which are both freestanding as well as hospital-based across the province. Our network includes the valuable contributions of patients and family partners, a range of key partner organizations, and as the hub of the network, BC Renal plans and coordinates on a provincial level and is part of the Provincial Health Services Authority. The BC Renal teams who have a small number of members who have diverse reach and lots of corollaries support the overall administration of the network and apply their various expertise for the specific activities. And these activities include things like business planning, provincial contract and pharmacy formulary management, the promise information system, analytics and methodology, research, and as well, we produce educational activities and resources for both healthcare providers and patients and their families. We're very fortunate to have kidney care providers from all disciplines, as well as patient partners. Each contributes their diverse knowledge, time, and energy on the different committees and working groups, and each of these are interdisciplinary. BC Renal's work also includes an annual kidney health campaign that raises awareness amongst the general population of British Columbia so that everyone knows about the importance of kidney health, disease prevention, and risk factors. I must say that I'm immensely proud and privileged that our network is recognized not only provincially, but nationally and around the world as a true best practice model. This is because we include planning, funding, delivery, and continuous innovation to improve patient care experiences and outcomes. And that integration is valued by all. To learn more than I can tell you in this small snippet, I really do encourage you to visit our website, see our Renal News annual publication, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thank you all for all you do, and thank you for learning more about BC Renal. Nothing worse than watching yourself. <laughs> um, so can I just ask, Steph, can you just, can you just move this a little bit more so I can? it's harder for me to see? Um, so there is a new landscape in, uh, in BC and post pandemic, we're still facing a number of uh, pressures, including the new COVID variants 
climate change. We, as we all know and will hear about, have um, really had a lot on our plate with climate change and these extreme weather events. And before, two years ago, I never even heard what an atmospheric river was, but now I have to explain it to people around the world that we have these in, in Canada. And also our need for Indigenous cultural safety, health and well-being has really been moved to the forefront, as you've seen. But I don't think that that's something that we have shied away from. And in fact, we've really embraced it. We do have and are working on finalizing a strategic plan. We started with a network-wide survey in September of 2022, and you remember we had our first in-person littler meeting then, where 100, over 130 patients, uh, people responded to the survey. It was sent to everybody that we could think of, uh, including key partners, staff at BC Renal, researchers, patients, medical and administrative leads, as well as all the kidney care professionals in the room. And then we had a meeting, um, um, where we actually had a planning day in October that over 100 people came to. And there we actually came, it brought the provincial committee members that um, Mike alluded to and actually had their input as well as, a, as well as health authority leadership. And this is the way one builds a strategic plan, right? You have to sort of distill it down and get people's different perspectives so that we can actually understand where we're going. And what we found with this survey is what BC Renal's doing well and things that we can do better. So what we do well, according to you, is we do patient engagement well. We have a good network structure. We do communication. We have amazing patient resources and support. And I'm told by my Canadian and international colleagues that they download a lot of resources from BC Renal for everything they seem to need. And we also have health professional resources and development. And so we have come up from that meeting and in partnership with everybody with four strategic priorities and three foundational principles. So the, you can see them listed here, but capacity, people, um, funding and facilities is one. Early intervention and safer care is another. Partnerships for improvement is another. And technology and innovation is another. And I was recently at the American Society of Nephrology meeting, and I must say that it was the most inspiring ASN I have ever been at but basically embraces all of this. The technology that is available to us in the current era for patients and providers to help us manage people better. The innovations in drug and understanding disease that is gonna let us to have better medicines, and they're not all drugs because they're repurposing plant materials as well, is remarkable. And I think this is an amazing era, and if we can harness those things within the structure as we go forward over the next five years, I think it'll be really important. We also have the three foundational principles, which are environmental sustainability, equitable and optimal people-centered care. And that word people is meant that we understand that people living with kidney disease are just one, but they affect an entire family and ecosystem, as well as their friends and the place that they work. And so the word people is chosen very intentionally and indigenous wellness. So part of that foundational principle means that we're, our commitment to environmental sustainability and planetary health has led us to newly appoint a medical lead for planetary health, Dr. Carolyn Stigant, who'll be speaking later in this meeting. But what we're going to do is focus on how we take those practices across the network. And I heard a story um, recently from one of our colleagues in Manitoba where he convinced the hospital to take all the um, effluent water and make a water um, collector for it so it can be used uh, within the hospital recycled, which didn't cost the hospital very much, saved them a lot of money. And that's one person doing one thing in one hospital in Winnipeg. Imagine what we could do uh, under Carolyn's leadership. Uh, life cycle assessments has been her, um, her passion and uh, educating people as to how important it is to look at health and disease over a continuum so that you actually truly understand how best to stay green. When you prevent people going on dialysis, you actually save all of that waste and everything else that goes on. So dialysis is a wonderful treatment if, if you need it, but it's also wonderful to not need it and then save the planet as well. We're, proposed, we're proposed, promoting sustainable renal care strategies and education and knowledge translation so that planetary health is not an afterthought, but it's actually embedded in everything we do. The, our second foundational principle, which is about equitable and optimal people-centered care, is to integrate everything into all of our, uh, all the voices that we can across BC renal committees and activities um, 
and also to measure the patient experience with our regular surveys and then act on that feedback. By having people truly goal set and have that communication between the people, their families, uh, and the providers about what matters to you is a really important way for us to move forward. We're raising awareness of kidney health and kidney transplantation with the Kidney Foundation, BC Transplant, and others, and I think those are incredible opportunities. Um, the patient reported outcomes, PROM is the word that we use for short because we all get lazy. We uh, can show here on this graph the uptake of the My Symptom Checklist, and I appreciate that not everybody and every health authority has necessarily been loving to do this, but codifying and trying to understand better how one measures symptoms, both for the patient and the provider to make it more accessible. And then when you make changes to see those changes by using the same tool is a really important part of how we do things. And I think we haven't always um, understood that, but this is really good to see. And it also helps to capture otherwise underreported symptoms, which if you say, hey, how are you going? Someone's going to say, fine, but you didn't ask about the itch and the sleep and the uh, inability to, and your restless legs and your appetite and how you're feeling overall. And so that systematic way of asking questions and getting answers, I think is, is really important. And our third foundational principle is Indigenous wellness and our commitment to improve health for Indigenous uh, peoples by developing a cultural safety strategy but also promoting Indigenous cultural safety education, training, awareness across the renal network. And we do that in partnership with CanSolve uh, CKD as well. Um, we have this wellness approaches across the network. We have our partner initiative that aims to improve kidney specific care in Indigenous communities with CanSolve. It's the Kidney Check Program, where as opposed to simply screening for do you have kidney problems or not, we've reframed it in communities, engaged communities, and ask them to help us assess how healthy the kidneys in their community are. And should we find someone with less kidney, less healthy kidneys, what can we do to support them and triage them appropriately? And that's a very different system and approach, and that was informed by our patient partners. Please don't tell us one more thing that's wrong with us. Tell us what's good about us, and then if we have something early, what can we do to make that better? And I think that was a, a really great way to change it. Um, so going to strategic priority one, um, we have a number of projects and we used to do everything for everyone everywhere, so to speak. Um, but what we've realized is that we have to really focus on the high impact projects that align with our strategic priority. So we have a hemodialysis workforce sustainability project. If we can't deliver that care, which is life saving, then that's a problem. We, as Maureen alluded to, we have this emergency disaster relief hemodialysis emergency support team, fondly called HEST, which is the first in the province and is being used in the country, I think, uh, and is being used as a model. And I'll tell you a bit about all of these in a moment, but or some of them, and facilities capacity and planning. Sadly, the way that we plan things in all parts of, um, of Canada and the province often are incredibly um, cumbersome and take a long time, but we're realizing that growth of need uh, far outstrips it. So we really need to have an organized system. So we have this facilities capacity and planning group that tries to get ahead of the world so that we can actually know where, what we need where and uh, how much. So um, we now have uh, our goal is to have 200 new hemodialysis nurses by 2030 by recruiting and retaining, having a specialty nursing training um, strategy, looking at staffing and workload and changing team structure and our emergency, emer emergency staffing support. Um, I just wanna show for a few minutes this nursing recruitment video, which I think uh, has been shared a number of different ways through LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, so external job postings and through BCIT. So if I'd ask you to run that video, please. When I tell people I'm a renal nurse, they ask me about the machines and the tubes that our patients are connected to. But for me, it's about so much more. It's a deeper connection that comes from a relationship we build with our patients over time. It's about trust, it means so much to both us and the patient. Renal nurses get to see the person beyond the patient 
and know a lot about their lives. This isn't the ER, but it's also critical, life-saving work. It's work that matters. We show up here to make their lives easier, more fulfilling, better. And that all starts with connection. BC Renal Nursing. Connection makes the difference. So yeah, that's, that deserves a clap. Um, so this project that was so amazingly led by Sarah Thomas is uh, the first ever creation of 12 HEST, uh, hemodialysis emergency support team members across each health authority. And the notion here is that how can we move nurses as quickly as we can to wherever they need to be when we need to do that in the face of a flood or a fire or the collapsing of a highway due to a flood followed by a fire or preceded by a fire. And these are all the things that we've had to deal with. So this is to ensure that those life-saving services are continued. It's mitigated through uh, to mitigate hospital admissions and patient transfers to other regions, which is very, very discombobulating for everyone. And also importantly, these people serve in non-emergency times to actually make sure that they mentor, um, knowledge share and under, have everyone understand emergency preparedness because it could happen within one institution as much as it can also happen across and to reduce the need for senior staff to have to do lots of multiple orientations of new staff. And so they serve two purposes and I think that's a, a very thoughtful way to do it. And I think it is truly a trailblazer. It aligns with the Ministry of Health, Health, Ministry of Health, Health Human Resource Strategy um, so there's a provincial travel resource pool, a provincial peer support and mentoring program, and a number of other provincial clinical programs, including pediatrics, critical care, are actively looking at the model to see how it can be recreated. And I think that's another testimony to uh, leadership, but also innovation that Maureen was speaking about. For facilities capacity and planning, we're trying to ensure that we have the right um, facilities and equipment to meet the current and future hemodialysis needs. As much as we would like a world without the need for dialysis, that is still a long way off. So how we capacity plan and forecast growth and partner with both the renal programs and the health authority, capital planning and finance teams, as well as the ministry, as you can imagine, is a pretty complex process. But by having it, um, all of the voices of the health authorities, but centrally speaking, I think we have a much better ability to plan as a province. Because as we know, the health authorities have boundaries, but really which side of which line you're on shouldn't matter to the patient. And it should be where can you get the care that's the closest to you. Strategic priority number two is about early intervention and safer care. And so we um, ha are developing with, through a number of means, um, provincial early education programs, increasing information and access to transplantation, uh, having a provincial support framework under the ABLE leadership of Dr. Mike Bevilacqua, a first that I know of provincial approach to uh, people living with the autosomal dominant kidney disease, and we're improving under Dr. Borkham and uh, Copeland and Singh's leadership, uh, home dialysis referral processes and outcomes to make sure that we get somewhere different uh, in the future. In terms of partnering for improvement, that we have, con we continue to build strong partnerships with organizations that have a number of complementary strengths. And on this slide are some um, that you've already seen on a few other slides, but it's really important. These are other health authorities in other provinces Kidney Foundation as a unique partner, CanSolve CKD as a pan-Canadian research network, first in kind, as well as other organizations within the province um, and also other academic organizations, including research institutes and UNBC. And I think this is also unique in terms of the way we've set up BC Renal, that it is truly integrated from the beginning. How do we make things better for people with technology and innovation? It's new disease modifying medications, promise as our way to stay accountable to the ministry and to our health authorities and to our 
people living with kidney disease so the money that we are the public stewards of can be properly guided and used in the right way through research and QI and through provincial uh, committees and professional groups. And for those of that are new to the province, please feel free to participate in said provincial committees and professional groups because that's how you actually stay connected. I alluded to this, but I really think it's incredibly important at the moment for us to give hope to everybody. And there are now classes of drugs that truly change people's kidney and heart and blood vessel disease so that they do not progress. And I think this is incredible. And certainly when I started nephrology, that I think that I would see these drugs not only come to market, but actually be shown to be this amazing. If you can imagine a 30% reduction in the time to dialysis or other bad things happening to you, heart failure, cardiovascular disease, or death. There's no cancer drug that does this, not a one. So we are sitting here with an absolute um, embarrassment of rich, riches in terms of drug classes, the Flozins, uh, the non-steroidal uh, MRAs, of which Phenarinone is the one currently available in Canada. We now at the ASN saw the amazing things that an endothelial receptor antagonists can do in terms of delaying progression of glomerulonephritis nephritides as well as possibly other diseases. And we have new specific targeted therapies for the different more rare diseases called glomerulonephritis. We have a new drug for intractable itch for hemodialysis patients and all of us know those people and we feel so bad that can we do nothing, we can do nothing for them. And there's so much more on the way. So I, I just can't imagine a more exciting time to be in nephrology. Um, and, and I would really, and we're doing trials and we're trying to make that availability of clinical trials across the province far easier for everybody, and so that is really exciting. PROMISE continues to migrate what some of you know as classic to the more functional PROMISE 4, and there's new proof of concept to work on a mobile app that lets patients do their ESAS, that self-reported information system, and they can follow their own changes as well as uh, you as care providers. So we're partnering with the BC government's identity author authorization, uh, authentication services to make this a real reality. And this is really helpful, especially because many of our patients are rural and remote, and that would be important for us to see that. So this is the development plan, just so you know. We also promise is the information system for the BC transplant, and there are important transplant initiatives both locally as well as provincially that we are incredibly uh, committed to, and they are actually top of our work plans over the next little while, along with some other things, and important for all of us to recognize that. And whilst I know that some of you complain about how fast we can't get things done in Promise, let me remind you that Microsoft doesn't respond to your uh, things nearly as quickly as Promise does, nor does, with all due respect, Cerner or Meditech. So uh, for us to help us take care of us best and stay accountable, I think that this remains uh, the backbone of how we do this. With respect to research and quality improvement, it's amazing to see the number of clinical studies that the province has been able to uh, engage in, uh, in glomerulonephritis under Dr. Sean Barber's leadership and others, uh, chronic kidney disease and dialysis studies. And we also, because of the database, are able to do a number of really high impactful studies uh, in a number of other conditions. So that's pretty impressive. We have numerous journal articles. We're only, we're not quite finished 2023 and we're, we're at 38, but there was just a publication in the uh, journal for uh, equity and diversity from our CanSolve uh, partnership in partnership with BC Renal. So we're up to at least 40 since this slide was made. So that's pretty fantastic. And uh, many of those are linked to projects that are getting done in the provincial committees. So we have lots of quality improvement and some of the posters that we're asking you to see are linked to that. Um, they're funded by the value add dollars. And I think that's really important because that's the utility of having provincial um, contracts is that we're able to build in that money to then make sure that we do the things that inform care and help us to, if there's no evidence, then to actually produce the evidence for evidence-based care. And please go and look at the posters to see that. We have B uh, BC Kidney Research in Focus as a new um, publication that you see, and it shares the depth and breadth of the research and the people doing it to support knowledge translation. 
and it profiles the various researchers in the network. So I do ask you to go to the website and look at it. It's really impressive to see people from all parts of the world, but also locally doing um, research. And there are five editions to date. Uh, and we've featured 25 studies and eight BC researchers and staff have been profiled. More to come. We have Province Wide Rounds, which is a collaboration between the UBC Division of Nephrology and BC Renal, and it tries to share new knowledge. All of those things, all of those um, uh, province wide rounds are actually available on the YouTube channel, which is pretty impressive. So if you missed one, they're at 7.30 a.m. on Fridays, and there's a notice that you get, but if you can't make it, you can always go back and see it. And there's also a series of patient, educa patient education webinars that uh, helps to reach everybody no matter where they are. These are an amazing set of resources that truly, I think, bring us together in a way that perhaps isn't uh, true in other uh, jurisdictions. But there's newsletters and social media, the website, and the annual renal news, which is coming. These are the QR, uh, QRs for the website, and you can subscribe to the newsletters. It'll just populate your inbox. I'm not sure what the lighting is. Oh, I think I'm way over time is probably the issue. Sorry. <laughs> it wasn't for that, but. Well, people wanted me to say it. <laughs> It's, I think it's probably testimony to the fact that we do so much that I can't fit it into the short period of time that I was given. I think also for us to recognize that and very fundamental when we started BC Reno, for those of you that weren't around, is that we said to the government, we will be accountable for the care that we provide. We promise, no pun intended, um, or pun intended. And so we have a national reporting to the Ministry of Health and PHSA to core we report to our regional programs on clinical and management indicators and finance reports. It's 100% transparent. Every health authority knows what every other health authority gets and why. Um, there's reporting to modality committees and working groups, and there's research support. And we show all of that so that you know where we are and where we're going. And so with that, um, I hope I've given you a little bit of an overview of what we do, uh, what you do and what we do together. And I can't thank you enough for your energy, commitment, and all of your support, as Maureen said, for the people that we care for and everyone around them, and also for the support of each other over some quite difficult times. Thank you.